right, Katie. Uh, so good to see you. Thanks for interviewing today. Um, leading up to finals crunch time. I want to start by talking about the stuff you're doing with Toasted and the video content that you're putting out. I've been to a few of your premieres and it's always a super fun time, but I think it's really kind of refreshing surf content. I think a lot of girls growing up wanted to see more of that type of edit um, featuring just girls ripping like good music and it's really sick. So first of all, how did this number one platform for surfing entertainment start? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the number one platform in the world. The goal wasn't to like fill the void of the lack of women's like surf film and just media because yeah there definitely is a huge void in it I guess it just kind of worked out like that but I've just always been a really big fan of like watching surf movies and watching um snowboard and skate videos so I, my biggest I guess reason for doing it is just wanting people to like feel the way I do when I watch stuff like that like a really cool song and to some surfing I just want people to like be inspired by it I guess like because that's what I feel when I watch like a surf video and yeah there definitely was not much women's surf films out there so it was just really cool to get to kind of bring some of my friends on some trips and kind of put it out there and now it's really cool to see like little girls come up to me and tell me they watch it and it's just pretty amazing <laughs> so it's driven by the music and you might even hear a song and that's what inspires the whole thing um but then you do a lot of the editing yourself too or all of it I've always just edited little things on YouTube and they're probably not as known but I've just randomly edited videos kind of for a while and I've just always loved to do it. And then I had this plan to make kind of a surf movie. And then we were going to have someone edit it. But then I I kind of got carried away and just edited like a, a Mexico part just to see how a song would work before the editor kind of, before we told what the editor what song. And then I, they were just like, oh, this is pretty good. Like, you should just edit the whole thing and I was like okay <laughs> so yeah I kind of became a nine to fiver for a while just editing all day got sucked into my computer but it's kind of just like a thing where if you're on if you're on a roll with it and everything's working you kind of just have to keep going so there was a lot of days where I spent eight to ten hours on my computer just editing but yeah, I do. I do pretty much all the editing. I have a lot of help from people, though. So you have a new edit premiering tomorrow. It's a stab edit of the year entry, and it is called The Bell Jar, which is oh, yes. classic. And I would love to hear about your inspiration for titling it after this book by Sylvia Platt. Oh, yeah. The reason we called it Bell Jar was because it's a cool name and also because while while I was kind of at the same time that I decided that I kind of wanted to make this edit it was when I was reading that book because I was I don't know I just I think I even learned about her in school and I was like oh this chick sounds sick so I like ordered one of her books I guess it just has a lot of funny quotes and it's pretty it's a pretty dark book but the way she kind of pokes fun at dark things is pretty different from like a lot of things that I read so that's why I liked it a lot and then it was I guess when we were trying to come up with a name for it it was just a lack of creativity I guess and I was like well I'm reading this book it's a cool name for an edit let's just name it that there's a quote in the book about the protagonist feeling as though she's at the eye of a tornado. And I was wondering if being on the tour sometimes <laughs> feels like you're at the eye of a tornado. Yeah, definitely feels like you're in the eye of the tornado sometimes. There's so many good quotes in that book. It's crazy. Yeah, worth rereading. If anyone like read yeah. it in school, go, get, go back and read it again. Yeah, it was like the first thing in school where like I was like, wow, that sounds really, really sick. 
but yeah, it definitely feels like you're in a tornado sometimes then too. <laughs> so you grew up, you know, side surfing with your friends, your family, and I, was there a point where you kind of realized that you were going to be one of the best surfers in the world? I don't even know. It's kind of a weird thing because I have a pretty bad memory, so I can't really remember what I was thinking. But obviously, I wanted to do something with it because because of like where I am. But I just yeah, I think I was just always just surfed for fun and because my parents just loved the beach and my parents didn't really push me to do anything really. They were kind of just let me do whatever. But since we were, they loved the beach so much and they were like, okay, we're going to the beach for the day. Then me and my brother just kind of like we're boogie boarding and then we started surfing. And then I guess we just got really into it and we fell in love with it. And my mom also, (laughs) my mom also surfs really good too. She started surfing when when I started surfing so maybe like 10 years ago or however long ago it was I don't know how I started competing there was just this local contest I think one of my friends told me to do it and they're like oh you should do it and then I did it and I think I made one heat it was when it was before like there was a girls and a boys it was just we were so young that it was just everyone is together and I think I made one heat. I got third in a heat, made a heat. And then it was like the, I guess, just where I like started my competitive surfing career then. Cause I was just so happy. And even though I lost the next round, it was still a pretty big moment. And then I started just doing the local, other local events. And then, yeah, I guess it was just always, fun to me and I was a pretty I'm a pretty competitive person so yeah so fast forward from you making it through one heat in that first contest to qualifying for the championship tour I'm sure (laughs) what happened in between then but uh the first year that you qualified you decided not to go straight in and to defer a year and it seems like you really do things on your own terms what were some of the factors in that decision to not go straight in and then how do you think that impacted looking back on this season um yeah it's definitely a big thing to balance like when like people always like come up to you and they're like kind of know who you are it's a weird thing for me just because I'm like it's weird when like the thing that you just do because you love it becomes kind of something that you like um have to do almost and you're like it's just finding like something that helps for me is like separating it like oh I'm going surfing with with my friends right now this is like not for anyone it's just for like because I enjoy doing it and then sometimes you like when you're trying out different surfboards or whatever that's like the work aspect of it but but yeah it's definitely a hard thing to wrap your mind around because it's just a a lot happening and it's happened really quick but I guess yeah I just made that decision just because I wanted to like yeah just spend time kind of with my friends and and with my family I didn't really want to completely sacrifice my life to surfing yet (laughs) I just wanted to kind of take a step back and and see what would happen I guess before then and yeah and then I I had the idea that I wanted to make a surf film too so I kind of was focused on that and I was still doing the challenger so I was still I kept competing but it was I'm definitely there wasn't there was not a single time that year where I was like I wish I was on to like I wish I chose to do the tour I didn't really watch much of it so maybe that's why but Maybe it's just because they didn't really get that much good waves. But yeah, I I was really content with my decision, I guess. You anticipated one of my questions, which was how do you stay in love with surfing when it becomes a job? Yeah, that's definitely something I've been trying to deal with this year because it is like, I don't want to say I'm trying to escape from it, but it was like when something that you use to escape become something that you almost try to escape from sometimes just in terms of like 
driving up to North Jetty or what that's like where I surf every day so I'm driving up to surf and then you like everyone kind of like there's like a bunch of old guys that are like oh like you should do this how's your bummer you lost like whatever tries to tell you their opinion on kind of things and I just wish I could kind of go surf without that sometimes so I'm like oh I want to escape from that so it's just weird when like oh I used to surf to escape from all of like talking to people and whatnot and now every time I surf there's like at least two or three people that come up to me and like try to talk to me but that's definitely helps to be to like find separation and um and yeah and also just try to appreciate it because like it's pretty dang lucky for people to like think that what you do is cool so that's that's a sick thing <laughs> but it's just weird for me because I'm I guess it's just the type of person I am just it's odd <laughs> nothing have- about it seems natural a lot of the time so it's just trying to figure out how to wrap your head around it has been something that is was like big for me to figure out this year yeah well so all the more reason to you know take one last year for yourself and um seems like that was a good move and then so yeah coming in this year you said in the WSL interview that your goal for the season was to make the mid-year cut and maybe do some roundhouse cutbacks and (laughs) So here you are in the final five. So either you were being humble or just, I don't know, but uh, you're, you're in the top five in your rookie season. Um, What is your headspace going into Trestles next week? Um, I don't really know what my headspace is going into next week, but yeah, I swear my, my goal for the year was just to make the cut because I was so hyper-focused on that I was not even thinking about the end of the year I just wanted to make it to the next half of the year (laughs) and yeah and then it was really just a lot of mixed emotions because I did it was kind of for me this year was either I I like got into the finals or I got last in the event so it's it's weird when like as an athlete I feel like your confidence at least for me, it's like your confidence is based on your last result. So it was like, oh, when I got last, I was like bummed and and didn't have much confidence. And then when I won, I was like kind of on top of the world. And and then and then I'll lose the next event. So it was just like going up and down. But yeah, I'm into next week. I don't really know. I'm just gonna try to not think about it that much. I guess just do what I normally do for each event and not try to think it's for a world title but it's definitely odd that it is like one day for that but strategy is don't think about it too much Mm -hmm. (laughs) well here's a pop quiz do you know if anyone has ever won the title in their rookie season I actually found this out though (laughs) yeah yeah Steph did right yeah Steph also last year was the fifth seed, I believe, going into the finals, and she won. Yeah. So it's a lot of heats to surf. And yeah, how does that feel? Yeah, it'll be it'll be a long day if I make it all the way. But um yeah, I guess the fact that it it's been done before makes it seem more achievable. So that's cool. And yeah, I've been I've definitely been watching that, going back and watching last year's work. Steph was kind of on a roll and she's also like my my favorite surfer so just watching her and pretty inspiring just everything she does yeah I think I saw some commentators saying it's not possible to win if you're the fifth seat at the too many heats but yeah. I guess it's like what you were saying earlier where if you win or if you place first then you're kind of yeah sure. and yeah that carries you through um so it, yeah it'll be exciting to watch what it, we talked about um keeping the balance between having surfing for yourself and having surfing as a job but as far as the job goes what excites you about competing um 
I don't really even know how to answer this, but I'm just like competitive. So I like to win. I guess that's what keeps us exciting. And yeah, getting to travel with my family and um, just sharing some like moments in between your heats is, is pretty cool. Like sometimes you're just like experiencing something in a different country and you're like, dang, I wish everyone could experience this because it's pretty dang lucky to travel and, and experience different cultures and places and things to look at it's it's like a, a fire hose of different going to a lot of places um do you have a favorite memory from the season on tour yeah I think it it might be because it's just the most fresh in my brain but just my mom traveled with me in Tahiti and it was really fun just to kind of have a little vacation with her I guess I wasn't really thinking too much there just because it was so beautiful and scenic and yeah just snorkeling with my mom and Tahiti it was pretty beautiful <laughs> you've said before that your mom is your biggest life mentor and a hero so speaking of your mom but I'm obviously a fan as well because she is following on Instagram so <laughs> <laughs> that's an honor to be followed by my mom on Instagram right? I know. <laughs> like, yeah. And yeah, I'll follow you guys. Wait, is it just C-Maven on Instagram? C-Maven magazine. Yeah. Okay. I have a clip of you from Pipe. That's pretty sick. I think that's like when your mom found the page. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. My mom just, she's been through a lot of stuff in her life. So it's just, she's really accepting to everyone's situation and she really doesn't say anything bad about anyone because she knows that there's too much things to think about in this world and a lot a lot of times it gets mixed up and it gets confusing so yeah she's really accepting and she has a lot of good advice for me and yeah whenever I am feeling a little unsure about anything I'll just tell her and she she has a pretty good answer to it so yeah that is beautiful and it's also really cool that she took up surfing around the same time mm -hmm. you did and is ripping so that that's awesome yeah she sounds like an inspiration and a great person to have you know on your support system and maybe that's why you're so level-headed <laughs> well yeah I definitely she brings me down to earth a lot of the time she she like prevents my mind from melting sometimes a lot of a lot of kids around here in southern california um are on the pro serving track and their parents are super involved and there's a lot of pressure do you think that it contributed to your success in a way or like how did that impact you that your parents didn't do that oh yeah i'm kind of i guess all people you kind of just want to do what the the opposite of what your parents say to do so I'm glad they didn't tell me to go surf right now or else I wouldn't probably wouldn't be here but yeah I guess they just didn't really push me in any direction so that was really big because so they just kind of were like oh yeah just be a kid and do whatever you kind of want to do and I just kind of decided whatever path I wanted to go on <laughs> which I think is really important and it it kind of bumps me out sometimes when I see parents being really pushy with their kids to do stuff and that might work for some kids but it definitely wouldn't have worked for me so I'm glad my parents didn't do that but yeah my parents are really supportive and I'm I'm definitely really really lucky that I have parents that were supportive but also not pushy with what I wanted to do yeah parenting advice they're gonna want to do the opposite of what you tell yeah. them so. <laughs> yeah I I can sort of relate to that although I'm not a pro surfer but I feel like having my mom be less involved in like whether I was doing my homework it just taught me independence and I think that made me more driven um yeah for sure yeah, yeah. I feel the same way. What are your plans for the off season? It's almost over. 
I just want to stay on land. I don't want to take a flight anywhere. I just want to maybe like go on some camping trips and and just not think for a while. But I also have school. So I started school like a couple of days ago. So I'm also trying to graduate early. So that's something I'm going to have to maybe try to get cracked down on. But also, yeah, I just want to like go camping with my friends and go to concerts and I don't know. So you, did you start college? No, I'm in, I'm a senior. Okay, cool. Yeah. So. Um, at Pipe Masters, they kept saying on the loudspeaker that you were 15 and I was like, I think she's older than that. <laughs> but you're, are you no, 17? I wasn't, I was, I was 16. They kept okay. saying 15, but yeah, I'm 17. I'm turning 18 at the end of October. So that's in a few months, I think. So are you able to do all your school during the off season or do you have to do it also on tour? Yeah, this year I was doing it on tour a lot. But I honestly thought it was a kind of a good thing because it's a good distraction just from, but a lot of the times I was very behind. So it was always an uphill climb for school. But yeah. it is a good distraction, but at times when like some things do and I can't, don't have really time to do it, then it gets stressful. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so you're, you might finish before the next season starts or? Yes, I'm trying to finish before the, if I do everything efficiently, then I can finish by January. So that's my goal. Sweet. Well, yeah, good luck. <laughs> Yeah, I hope I can get there. Yeah. If you were not a pro surfer, what do you think you would do for a living? Yeah, actually, I was doing an OBS and I asked this question and I was like, damn it. They I would do some yeah, no, it's a good question. But then I, I was just like, it would either be maybe in video editing, because I really like to do that, or like skateboarding, because I like skateboarding. Maybe I'd put more energy into that. But I was like, realistically I would be like wondering what the fuck I'm gonna do because I'm still in high school and I don't actually know I'd probably be like what am I gonna do because I'm a really indecisive person so I'd probably not know I would probably just be like oh figuring out maybe what college I would go do or really struggling with what with that <laughs> yeah fair enough if somebody asked me what I would do for a living I would have no idea um and I'm 25 so yeah that's a hard question what is your favorite Erica Badu song oh um maybe penitentiary philosophy this song or the song called woo what's your favorite place to eat in Oceanside blow up the spot blow up the spot primos tacos best pizza sunshine kitchen Start Fresh Cafe. Those are, was that three or four? <laughs> They're wow. all different kinds of things. So those are the spots. And Shoots, Shoots Fit, Shoots Pokey. Oh, yeah. You had a premiere there and it was super fun. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, I will be in the audience tomorrow for the Bell Jar premiere. Looking oh, forward to yeah. it. Yeah, we have some sick bands playing, so it'll be, hopefully it'll be fun. This girl called Linka is playing. She's, I don't know, we like her. Pretty cool. Yeah, I think you had Doll Riot at the Toasted one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? <laughs> They're pretty punk, but yeah. Linka's more mellow, so we'll like build up to the, to the more thrashy music. I don't know what the name of the band was. It was like these young guys and they <laughs> do not, and I was just not expecting it. It was like so grungy and they they were hardcore. So that was pretty sick. Yeah, those are all my brother's friends. They have a band, but but they're actually so good. Like the guitarist is crazy good. Yeah. So thanks for bringing good music and good surfing. <laughs> and um, Yeah, always shouting out Oceanside. I really, really appreciate your time. And yeah, I will, I'll nod to you tomorrow from the crowd. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.